Rome Report comes to you from the Department of Social Communications, Catholic Archdiocese of Accra. This and every Sunday from 3.30 to 4 p.m. on GTV. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Coming up in today's show, Pope Francis participates in a global rosary to combat the pandemic. This priest with coronavirus begs people not to leave home. We go to a virtual music festival perfect for the quarantine. All this and much more here on Rome Reports. Before praying the Global Rosary at 9 p.m. Rome time, Pope Francis sends a message to the faithful. He prayed that Catholics entrust themselves to St. Joseph for protection, especially for one intention. Con la Vergine Madre, supplica il Signore perché liberi il mondo da ogni forma di pandemia. Amen. He highlighted the difficult time for the global church and gave some recommendations for those who are under quarantine. Facciamoci prossimo l'uno dell'altro, esercitando noi per primi la carità, la comprensione, la pazienza, il perdono. Per necessità i nostri spazi possono esserci ristretti alle pareti di casa, ma abbiate un cuore più grande dove l'altro possa sempre trovare disponibilità e accoglienza. In addition to the end of the pandemic, Pope Francis also prayed for the country, politicians, doctors, the church, families, and the elderly in solitude. He asked for consolation, encouragement, and intercession for the weakest and the poor. Pope Francis's general audience was streamed once again from the Apostolic Palace Library. The Pope reflected on the fifth beatitude, which focuses on mercy. Di avere bisogno di perdonare, di avere bisogno del perdono, di avere bisogno della pazienza. Questo è il segreto della misericordia. Perdonando si è perdonati. He asked Christians to entrust themselves to Saint Joseph, whose feast day is March 19th. Nella vita, nel lavoro, nella famiglia, nella gioia, nel dolore, egli ha sempre cercato e amato il Signore. Meritando l'elogio della scrittura come uomo giusto e saggio. Invocatelo sempre con fiducia, specialmente nei momenti difficili, e affidate a questo grande santo la vostra esistenza. The Pope also reminded the faithful of the upcoming 24 hours for the Lord, an occasion each Lent to ask for God's mercy. This year it will take place on March 20th to 21st. He asked those who can't join in the usual ways because of the quarantines to observe the tradition through personal prayer. Incoraggio i fedeli ad accostarsi in maniera sincera alla misericordia di Dio nella confessione e a pregare specialmente per quanti sono nella prova a causa della pandemia. 
The Pope also invited all Christians to join in a worldwide praying of the Rosary on March 19th at 9 p.m. Rome time. The moment of spiritual unity was proposed by Italian bishops. During Mass on Monday morning, the Pope asked to pray for those facing financial difficulties because of the coronavirus. Preghiamo oggi per le persone che per la pandemia stanno incominciando a sentire problemi economici perché non possono lavorare e tutto questo ricade sulla famiglia. Millions of people around the world have interrupted their work routines and are staying home to stop the spread of the virus. It goes in the direction of greater transparency. According to the papal spokesperson the Matteo Bruni, the Pope's May trip to Malta has been postponed. The new date has yet to be determined due to the current global situation. It was originally planned for May 31, 2020, his first trip outside of Italy this year. The last time a pope visited a Mediterranean island was 10 years ago. Benedict XVI commemorated the 1,950th anniversary of St. Paul's shipwreck on the island. Pope Francis was expected to speak about the rights of migrants while there. In the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, the Vatican asks priests to be prudent when hearing confessions. It asks them to wear face masks, stay in ventilated areas, and respect safety distances. The Pope also explains what to do when confession is not possible. Se tu non trovi un sacerdote per confessarti, parla con Dio. È tuo padre. E dille la verità, Signore. Ho combinato questo, questo, questo. Scusami. E chiedergli perdono con tutto il cuore, con l'atto di dolore. E prometteli, dopo mi confesserò, ma perdonami adesso. E subito tornerai alla grazia di Dio. The Vatican also asks bishops to consider granting general absolution in hospitals infected by the coronavirus. Pope Francis has also granted a plenary indulgence to people in risk of dying and or those sick with the coronavirus. The indulgence applies to other family members, medical staff, and all those who care for them. It even extends to those who pray for an end to the pandemic. The Apostolic Penitentiary explains that contrition for one's sins and participation in different forms of prayer are enough to gain the indulgence. The Vatican has decided what to do for this year's Holy Week celebrations amid the coronavirus crisis. It clearly states that the date of Easter cannot be transferred to another time due to its central importance in the liturgical year. Instead, chrism mass and processions traditionally observed during Holy Week can be postponed to a later date, to be decided by bishops. One recommended date is September 14th, the exaltation of the Holy Cross. For the Paschal Triduum, where public celebrations cannot be held, Bishops and parish priests are asked to inform the faithful so they can follow live, not recorded, broadcasts. On Holy Thursday, parish priests can celebrate evening Mass of the Lord's Supper without the traditional washing of the feet, nor the procession with the Blessed Sacrament to the place of repose. For Good Friday, where possible, the bishop or parish priest will celebrate the Passion of the Lord to the extent possible. For the Easter Vigil, the lighting of the fire will be omitted. The baptismal liturgy will be limited to the renewal of baptismal promises. These changes are valid for the year 2020 only. Italy has asked its citizens not to leave their homes to avoid further contagion of the coronavirus. However, there are still thousands of homeless people with no place to go. Eh, poveretti, e continuiamo. As an initial form of aid, Pope Francis donated 100,000 euros to Caritas Italy to care for the homeless in this time. Beyond that, every morning, religious men and women from the Vatican Office of Papal Charities walk through the streets near St. Peter's to bring hot drinks, cookies and company to the people who sleep there. It's a way to observe precautionary measures against contagion while not abandoning anyone. 
What people are most grateful for is knowing there's someone concerned about their situation. Every night, Christian institutions like the Salvation Army patrol the area to bring people dinner. They take advantage of the opportunity to see if anyone needs medical attention or if they can offer some kind of human contact. These are the small gestures that make a great difference, especially in this moment of difficulty. The country with the highest density of doctors is Cuba, where there are eight doctors for every 1,000 people, is followed by Monaco with seven per thousand inhabitants, San Marino with six, and Sweden, Uruguay, and Austria with five. You're watching Rome Reports. Coming up after the break. This Thai store is making free patterned face masks for the coronavirus. You are watching Rum Reports. This is Father Gabriel from the parish of St. Vincent de Paul in Valdemoro, Spain. On Thursday, March 12th, he tested positive for the coronavirus. Now quarantined, he stays in touch with his parishioners through YouTube. He sent out a video apologizing to anyone he had unknowingly infected. Pero si os he contagiado, pues bueno. If I've infected you, well, I apologize. I don't resent the person who infected me. I don't even know who it was. His voice broke as he remembered a number of his parishioners who have died, or are in intensive care because of the virus. I want to ask all of you to pray for them and all the people who have died. I want to pray for Jose and for the mother of some of my priest friends, and for all the people who will die very alone in these days. Father Gabriel thanked medical personnel for their work. He also said the healthcare system could be overwhelmed if people didn't take action soon. Por favor. Please, I beg you, don't leave your homes. Don't leave your homes for any reason. Don't leave your homes. At least 11 priests in Italy have died because of the coronavirus, most of them in the country's northern regions. In the United States, a number of clergymen have also tested positive for the virus. Among them are the rector of Christ Church in Georgetown, who had presided at four services with around 550 attendees. In the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, Italy is in need of an estimated 50 million masks. That's because the country doesn't make this product and it can't get it from foreign companies due to the border closures. This difficult moment has sparked creativity and a sense of solidarity in many people. One example is the Talarico family. My father and I looked each other in the eye. We wanted to do something to help. Quarantine is hard. We're dynamic people. We wanted to move, to do something for our country. That's why we came up with this idea to raise money to help the Calabria region. They established one of the most prestigious brands of handmade ties, Talarico. However, in recent days, its tailors have gotten together to produce masks to meet the demand and contribute to the common good. They came up with a special mask from their exclusive designs. The mask has a small pocket which allows the paper filter inside to be changed for a clean one. We made them using the leftover fabric from our ties. The result was a mask like the one I'm wearing. We're making around 10,000 to sell for 5 euro a piece. All the money we make will be donated. The masks are handmade by our tailors. Over 30 tailors are working on the initiative Talarico per il Sociale e per la Calabria. With the money earned, they will purchase healthcare material needed to face the pandemic in Italy's southern region of Calabria. I'm proud of Italians in this moment. I rediscovered the solidarity of the Italian people, which I thought we had lost. Seeing people sing on their balconies and saying, we can't see each other, but we are near, is very moving. The initiative is yet another indication that difficult moments have the power to bring people together. In this case, it's an entire nation, united under a single hope. Tutto andrà bene. Everything will be okay.
For many years, South Sudan has been a site of civil war and violence. That's why Caritas Internazionali says the country remains one of their top priorities. The Secretary General says there is hope for an end to the civil war and the reunification of the government. He says, however, that this political success would present a new set of issues. If that's the case, then we will also have other humanitarian challenges because people who have been uh, displaced or who have taken refuge in, uh, in uh, Uganda and other neighboring countries would like to come back to their homes. And there I think we need to, uh, we need to prepare ourselves in order to receive them and in order to help them to uh, rehabilitate themselves uh, into their homes. According to the UNHCR, there are currently over 2 million South Sudanese refugees and asylum seekers in neighboring countries. Thus, such an influx would be a big challenge, given the country's precarious agricultural situation. So, uh, as on today, uh, we know that uh, South Sudan is also undergoing a certain amount of crisis in the area, in the humanitarian crisis, in the sense that there is food insecurity, and uh, due to uh, lack of food in the market and also due to lack of uh, uh, agricultural products because of the floods. And now we have the invasion of locusts. The Secretary General says Caritas South Sudan is preparing to offer shelter, livelihood opportunities and peace-building activities to promote the integral rehabilitation of the population. This will only happen if the two warring leaders follow through with the peace agreement, which Pope Francis implored them to work on during their meeting in the Vatican in April 2019. In which country was the tie invented? Croatia, Italy, France. You are watching Rome Reports. In which country was the tie invented? Croatia, Italy, France. The correct answer is A. It began with Croatian mercenaries in the 17th century. You're watching Rome Reports. In the face of the global quarantine against coronavirus, Católicos and Red set in motion an original initiative to spread hope through music in these difficult times. Resistiré, erguido frente a todos. Me volveré de hierro para endurecer la piel. It's the online Catholic music festival already with 19 artists set to participate. We want to extend an invitation each day at 8 p.m. Spanish time to participate in the Catholic Music Festival. I will stay home. Catholic artists in Spain and America unite to accompany others during this time of confinement because of the coronavirus. It's completely free and you can follow it on Twitter and Instagram. The festival will end April 4th. Participation is free and simply requires following the artists on Catholicos and Red social media. These will allow those interested to receive notifications every day at 8 p.m. Spain time. With many churches closing around the world, the Pope asked priests to rack their brains for ways to stay close to the people. Que non lasciano da solo il santo popolo fedele di Dio. He was the first one to preach by example. He opened the doors of his residence to television cameras so his daily mass could be followed via streaming. The public health emergency has sparked the creativity of many priests, evident in scenes like this one. This priest hears confession in the street, always from a prudent distance. Another priest asked his parishioners for pictures to place in the pews at their parish. That way he would pray for them and symbolically close the gap between them. Other priests also turned to streaming to broadcast masses and other liturgical celebrations. That's not all. Being locked up at home impels those with a shortage of spiritual reading material to turn to audios available on apps, websites, and YouTube channels. Among them are 10 Minutes with Jesus, which offers daily reflections in English and Spanish. Drastic times around the globe permit helpful measures by Catholics who are offering services to all those on lockdown. Whether it's virtual masses, adoration, prayers, or free Lenten meditations, here are some ways the quarantine can be lived out faithfully. 
Pope Francis is setting the example with his virtual daily masses, weekly general audience, and Sunday Angelus. He engages Catholics around the world with his messages and daily prayer intentions, which can all be found on Rome Reports' website. Likewise, priests and bishops are following suit by live streaming their masses. Various dioceses are posting the Eucharistic celebration, led by their priests, but there are also outlets offering more. For example, Catholic TV has daily mass, the readings of the day, prayers, and an archive of past masses in both English and Spanish. The Catholic Information Center in Washington, D.C. posts their daily mass, adoration, and rosary on their YouTube channel. The Jesuit community in Spain is also posting their daily masses and have created a new hashtag, En Casa con Dios, or At Home with God in English. PrayMoreNovenas.com is offering a novena that begins March 20th for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. The prayers are posted on their website for everyone to follow along. The Magnificat, a book containing daily readings, prayers, and reflections, is being offered free for this month. It's available in English and Spanish. An online conference launches Friday, March 20th, called Be Not Afraid. It provides participants with daily inspiring content sent straight to their email in order to confront this difficult time. While group activities and going out are being limited this Lent, it's the perfect time to step up one's prayer routine and pray for a conversion of hearts, as well as an end to the global coronavirus pandemic. During this unorthodox time of stress and lockdown, counseling is available, and statistics are being offered about the pandemic facing the world. It's all on an online platform called Corona Care. How can I help you? Welcome to Corona Care. Organizations like Chameleon Disaster Service International and Catholic Hospital Association of India have joined together to launch this service for people who are under quarantine. It started at the beginning of February in response to the crisis in China and has been developing and growing as the virus spreads throughout the world. There is a growing fear in the minds of people. So people are stressed, people are tensed, and there is a need for people to open up and talk to somebody. We have volunteers or medical doctors who can provide scientific and medical explanations for their questions. We have psychologists and uh, spiritual advisors who can listen to the concerns of the people. People concerned about the situation can make an appointment to speak to professional social workers or medical experts online at coronacare.life. We need to come together, work together in solidarity with those who are victims of the coronavirus. With fear and panic spreading nearly as fast as the virus, Corona Care allows everyone to get the help they need whether they're on lockdown or not. The seventh edition of the International Prize for Sacred Architecture, organized every four years by the Frate Sole Foundation, is now underway. It is open to architects who, in the last decade, have projected churches for any Christian denomination. Architect Luigi Leoni, current president of the foundation, explains its goal. La Fondazione Frate Sole si prefigge di sensibilizzare sul tema della bellezza dello spazio sacro, di promuovere l'arte e l'architettura sacra. Submitted works must communicate expressive qualities of mystical values, harmony and beauty in form originality, and creativity in architectural design. In the previous edition in 2016, first prize went to Spanish architect Rafael Moneo with his Jesu Church in San Sebastián, Spain. In second place came this wooden church of the Ca Dom Parish in Vietnam. Its relationship with nature can be appreciated in its building materials and its use of open spaces full of natural light. Third prize went to the St. Trinitatis Church in Leipzig, Germany. It was built out of the same stone used to build the most important monuments of the city thus underlining the structure's relationship with history. Admissions for this year's edition will be accepted until May 8, 2020. The award ceremony will be held in Pavia on October 3rd. In our next program, all Pope Francis's initiatives to fight the coronavirus. This and much more here on Rome Reports.
I'd like to present a view of Christian evangelization you might not have heard before. See, if you want to effectively evangelize other people, perhaps you should start thinking of yourself as a mirror. Yes, that's right, a mirror. Those who don't know God, those who have not yet learned of Him and His love, need some kind of introduction, a sort of starting point. That's where the mirror comes in. You and I can become the very best evangelizers by simply being accurate reflections of God. The same spirit that touched the apostles at Pentecost can embolden us to share our faith with those around us. When people see how faithfully we live our Catholic faith, they will start to understand the God they cannot see by seeing his reflection in us, the people they can see. When others witness the amazing things that come from a life lived faithfully for God, they'll want some of that too. Maybe St. Francis said it best, preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. Live truth. Live Catholic. Live Catholic. For over 2,000 years, the Catholic Church has consistently transformed through sacred scriptures and sacred tradition. It is comforting to know that some things remain consistent. Live truth, live Catholic. Visit our shop at Shiashi, opposite Gethsemane Cemetery, and find for yourselves the following. Monstrance, Chalice, Candles, Clerical Sheds, Bibles, Writings of the Early Church Fathers, and other sacramentals. For more information, contact Live Truth, Live Catholic Bookshop. For over 2,000 years, the Catholic Church has consistently transformed through sacred scriptures and sacred tradition. It is comforting to know that some things remain consistent. Live truth, live Catholic. Visit our shop at Shiashi, opposite Gethsemane Cemetery, and find for yourselves the following. Monstrance, chalice, candles, clerical sheds, Bibles, writings of the early church fathers, and other sacramentals. For more information, contact Live Truth, Live Catholic Bookshop on 020. 222-0376 or 024-960-6155 Live Truth, Live Catholic Your number one stop shop for your religious items Rome Report comes to you from the Department of Social Communications Catholic Archdiocese of Accra This and every Sunday from 3.30 to 4pm on GTV